Good morning, good afternoon and good evening my dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to another session of Q&A, question and answers from the General Conference of International Missionary Society, Seventh-day Adventist Church Reform Movement. Once again, we are having Sister Raquel Ose. Thank you very much for coming here to help us to understand a very Thank you for crucial coming. question, I would say. <laughs> and, uh, and we were studying about will there be another temple uh, last time and then it's an extension of uh, that study and uh, that question that uh, we are going to study about the question of red hyper found in the Bible and also there are so many questions people have asked about this subject. So based on that we will be having our Q&A today and it's going to be very interesting before we go further let us ask our Lord to be with us and let us pray together. Our most loving, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this moment that was given to us as a blessing. Lord, as we are going to study the word of God and also we want to study a clear and to have a clear understanding about thy truth. Help us, Father, with clarity and with thy Holy Spirit guidance and thy wisdom and knowledge so that we may understand it clearly. And Lord, help us to be a blessing to others as well. Lord, we pray especially for Sister Raquel who is helping us to understand this subject and also be with thy servant as well as all those who are listening and watching this program, even at later times. Lord, thank you, Father, once again for thy help for, and and thy guidance to help us to understand thy truth. Lord, abundantly bless us with thy Holy Spirit and we surrender ourselves, asking pardon for our sins. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Sister, we have a couple of questions here and uh, all these questions are extension of our earlier question about the building of another temple and about the blessings claimed by the Israelites. And uh, this time the concentration is about red hyper. They are asking about what about this red hyper scenario and uh, is this going to happen or take place? And, uh, and another person is sending me a question asking, Isaiah 11, 12, we read, he will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. So based on that, will this going to happen again? And will there be a temple be rebuilt? And what about the red hyper? And they are quoting Jeremiah, Ezekiel and so on. And also, and they're asking about the reconstruction of the temple once again. So based on this, so I ask all the questions now. This is the theme. This is what they're asking. Multiple people are asking about this question. Time is yours. Thank you. So in Numbers 19, we find a complete chapter dedicated to a specific, a specific ritual <clears throat> that was based on a single piece of offering, and that was the red heifer. Um, let me um, define the term so that it will be easier to go through. So um, in the common King James Version, we have hyper and give the impression that is a, a young cow. Uh, in fact, um, um, probably it was, according to Jewish tradition, between four to five years of age. And in fact, is cow, uh, the term, but is a young cow, but in an adult stage. So um, something very significant is the color need to be red, uh, but not partially or have some spots or miss much with other colors uh, in the fur of the animal, but need to be entirely red. 
in, in all the body uh, externally that can be seen. So that is very difficult to find by the fact that uh, cows uh, uh, have a genetical combination, uh, not only through continents, but also between different um, categories of cows. And um, to find an absolutely poor genetical colored red cow without any um, evidence of other um, color is extremely difficult. So uh, the singularity and exclusivity of the offering um, was very significant at this point. And the main purpose, if we consider the chapter, uh, was purification. Uh, purification for a specific uh, issues in life. Number one is connected with connection with curbs, uh, with dead uh, animals or dead humans, or contaminated objects that are, have, have been in contact with also and purify uh, circumstances. But the fundamental element is a uh, fully purification. Uh, that was uh, a praxis very common uh, during the period of the judges, for example, that uh, regular conflicts um, and hostilities with the new conquering territory happened, and the soldiers were in contact with uh, dead uh, bodies and they even perpetrated this kind of actions. So this required a completely uh, purification uh, uh, that took from three to seven days. Um, have some similarities with Leviticus chapter 14 where we find also the description of the purification ritual in the case of leprosy. Uh, have many elements together, um, even if the procedure for the sacrifice was exceptional in comparison with the regular principles of the uh, sacrificial system. And we will be in details which are these difference and why um, or which are the main purposes of this a specific, completely chapter dedicated to this uh, concrete um, sacrifice. So that is part of uh, the first question. <clears throat> the second question that connected uh, the red hive um, sacrifice with uh, temple is very significant, but only related with the Judaism. Uh, as um, religion and um, Torah interpretation. Uh, let me give you some examples about that. Um, for example, the first time that we have this specific reference about this um, sacrifice is in Numbers 19, and that was shortly before entering in Canaan. And the purpose was connected also with the tabernacle system that um, we study in our previous program about approximately 400 and a couple of years more between the uh, establishment and the erection of the tabernacle until the construction of the first temple. Uh, again, we have um, the first level of hyper um, a sacrifice by the period of tabernacle with Moses. Then we have the second uh, phase of this with David in a sacrificial system of the red hyper in order to purify all the territory, the location that um, was dedicated to the temple, the first one. Then we have the destruction of the first temple, which is also uh, mentioned in our last program. And the same happened with Ezra and Nehemiah by the uh, erection and anointment of the second temple. 
again, the sacrifice of the red hyper happened. So that was not a sacrifice on a regular basis, but for very specific situations and circumstances. Now, what have contemporaneously um, occurred that um, numbers in IT become so trendy or so over explained in these circumstances? Okay, that is connected with the Jewish tradition and the beginning of the Israel Gaza conflict. And we will be in details in the presentation that promote the idea that red hypers have been detected, have been transported to Israel. And in fact, that is the precedent for a third temple building. And that is one of the main reasons why Hamas and October 7th uh, proceed with the attack that the month is very important, the day is very significant, and we will speak more in details how this connection happened based on Jewish tradition interpretation of uh, number 19. Uh, we, as a Bible-based uh, Christian denomination, we understand and study and respect highly all the structure of the old dispensation uh, in projection to the fulfillment in Jesus Christ as part of the completely phases of the plan of salvation. So this um, lead to a completely different approach and understanding. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. I could say that uh, you will be explaining to us when, we are, when you are having the presentation. But uh, just, uh, I have two questions based on what you explained. So is this red hyper, uh, it symbolically, compares, we can compare with Jesus? Uh, absolutely. We will see uh, the type and the anti-type. Remember, uh, please, that in Adventism, one of the core uh, and vital fundamental beliefs was the sanctuary and the way how uh, this projection toward Jesus Christ came in fulfillment. And that was a very innovative um, approach to the Old Testament in coordination with the fundamental truths of the New Testament. So this is uh, Adventist belief um, that is fundament for our faith as well and represent absolutely um, the projection about the ministry of Jesus on earth and also the ministry of Jesus uh, actually in the sanctuary in heaven. Oh, okay, my second question is, that how this red hyper being sacrificed? Yeah, that was something very unusual in the general structure of the sacrificial system. We know that even if different variations were added based on uh, the Holocaust, that was a completely consumption and burning of the offering, um, uh, the animal needed to be completely um, uh, divided in different parts of the body, clean, eliminated blood uh, and fat, and put in a, a specific order upon the altar of sacrifice. And all these sacrifices happen inside of the tabernacle, upon the altar of sacrifices. The first in um, differences is that in this case, from the red hyper, um, we don't have this structure. Uh, because the sacrifice never, ever happened inside of the holy quarters. Uh, that is number one. Number two, um, the animal was not offered upon the altar of sacrifices. Number three, it was completely burned down with the fat, with the blood, everything inside and needed to be in, uh, in a place outside of the um, sepulchre of the sanctuary or the temple after, and needed to be uh, preserve the ashes uh, for another uh, combination of purification procedure, and that was water with the ashes 
of the red hyper. And that was used in a process of purification like leprosy I already mentioned. Also in cases of lack of evidences, people needed to drink um, this bitter water or the water of purification that was clean water with the ashes, with some ashes, because they, after the sacrifice, they keep all the ashes when the, the, the animal was completely burned out. And these ashes were kept and used for these specific rituals of purification. So in all the process was important variations um, that somehow uh, deviated for the regular services. Okay, so very important. So then you brought up uh, another aspect here the animal will be burned completely. So that yes. means unlike the other circumstances, they drain the blood. Here it is not going to take place. It is burned with the blood. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, sister, for all these specifications. And uh, we are so interested to go through the, the, the presentation so that we will understand the subject more clearly. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity and for having me here. Uh, so one more time, let me introduce shortly about this subject. What we are going to orient ourselves toward this subject is a contemporary perspective, the type and anti-type about the red hyphen. So uh, we need to understand uh, the literality of the content, also the symbolical, um, uh, accent that this important event uh, have in the Holy Scriptures and of course the uh, projection that have to our real contemporaneous time. So without further ado, let us go to our first slide that we are going to divide in term and interpretation. So the definition of the term is extremely important. Um, because the red hyper is the animal whose ashes um, they wear, keep uh, in a special way in order to use in the ritual purification of persons, objects defiled by corpse, death in this case. Um, I already mentioned in our uh, previous conversation what, that why the, the English term in the standard <clears throat> King James Version means a young cow, this hyper. Uh, in fact, it's not a calf um, because it's, it's a cow. The term in Hebrew is para. And this is a young cow, but completely developed. So it's not a calf. Um, that, that is important to understand that. Um, we will consider three levels of interpretation in this uh, presentation. The first one is the literal, because that is absolutely necessary to understand the content as it is in order to be fair and correct in the projection or the interpretation toward the new dispensation. And of course, uh, based on contemporaneity, we need to add the traditional Jewish interpretation in real time today. And we will uh, combine all three levels of interpretation to facilitate a more extended perspective about this subject. So let us go to this uh, contrast in comparison with numbers 19 based on the content and that is the type, the, the regular procedure uh, for this um, sacrificial um, and important event. And um, on the other section, you will find always uh, the clarified clarifying Bible verses that decodify the symbolic elements that you will find in Numbers 19 with the antitype, and that is like the shadow and the light in Jesus Christ. Please keep in mind that all the sacrificial system have the purpose to emphasize in humans at that time and today with the plan of salvation 
the death penalty for sin and the uh, grace available by the love of God to humanity to restore and regenerate ourselves. So let us consider Numbers 19.2. Uh, one of the main characteristics of the red hyper is that needed to be without a spot. That was not only the uh, anatomical and physiological um, uh, structure of the animal, but also the external appearance. So no any wounds or scarves or any depigmentation needed to be entirely from red color without any, absolutely any exception of other coloration. Um, so this principle is very interesting because in Hebrew chapter 9 verses 13 and 14 we find that Christ offered himself without a spot to God. So he was perfect, completely, and uh, fulfilled all the requirements for a perfect sacrifice. Let us go to Numbers 19, also verse 2, a middle part. Um, it's interesting uh, the emphasis that is given that is not only without a spot, but was with no blemish in the animal. So that, that is very significant because uh, beside defects that were out of question, not even something of aggression or bad behavior or any kind of behavioral anormalities in the animal. That is what is meaning by we divide between without a spot and without blemish. So one is uh, connected directly, this first expression, with the structure, anatomy, physiology, and functionality of the animal. But the second one, without no blemish, is about the attitude, uh, will be a very peaceful, a friendly, and good behaved cow. Okay, so have to do with the behavioral issues of it. Because also, um, Moses speak about animals that cows or bulls that will damage humans, they needed to be killed immediately. Okay, so uh, this element between who, how the cow was and how the cow behave, both of them needed to be without a spot and without blemish. And this same principle we find in Jesus Christ, considering John 15, 10 and 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Christ uh, never disobeyed the law of God. He knew no sin. So uh, not only he was perfect as a human, anatomically and physical, uh, physically, but also his behavior was with no spot and no blemish. So let us continue uh, in the last part of verse 2 of Numbers 19. And there's something very interesting here as well. One that had never borne the joke, never been forced to do anything. So needed to be a free animal that was not domesticated and that was not forced uh, to, to, to carry the jog and, and, and somehow to impose a specific duty. So that is very significant because John 10, 15 tell us about Jesus, as the Father know me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Jesus offered voluntarily to be this sacrifice. Um, he was with no burden upon himself. He was not guilty for anything. He was not forced to anything, uh, but voluntarily based on love to the creatures on this planet, he was willing um, and able to do um, his, um, to offer his life as this uh, red height as well. Let us go to Numbers 19, verse 3. The red hyper was the plane without the camp in a rough valley. 
That is so significant as well. In Hebrew 13, 12 and John 10, 16, it's explaining to us that uh, Christ was sacrificed uh, outside of the gate. So outside of the city. Uh, in the same way, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, all the rest of the sacrifices were presented um, in um, sacrifice inside of the courts of the uh, tabernacle after in the temple and uh, put upon the altar of sacrifices. With the red heifer, nothing uh, of these um, uh, pre-qualifications in the process needed to be done, but exactly the opposite. Never come inside of the court of the tabernacle. Uh, needed to be far in, in a deshabitated and desolated place. Maybe this sounds familiar with um, Leviticus 16 also, uh, during the procedure of the atonement and the election of the uh, scapegoats. Mm, they are these elements in common at this point, but in the um, sacrifice and crucifixion of Jesus, that was a literal uh, fulfillment of this principle. Let us go further on and uh, become extremely interesting and uh, very diverse because in Numbers 19 verses 5 and 6, we find elements that are an addition to all this procedure. So um, you have the heifer and then you have cedarwood, you have aesop and scarlet. And all this need to be burned in the fire. So it was not only the animal, but also these three other elements. Um, and we find an excellent um, understanding of these uh, symbolic elements in the projection of the plan of salvation. Uh, we know very well the prayer of confession, forgiveness, and requests of um, acceptance of David in Psalm 51 verse 7, purge me with isop and I shall be clean. So again, we are dealing with cleanness. Yesaya 118, also a very uh, well-known Bible text, uh, though your sins are like a scarlet, will come as snow. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.13, the fire shall try every man's work. It's a again, an element of purification and detachment um, in the case of gold, for example, to the true gold and the dross. So here, uh, again, we have a connection uh, with uh, Leviticus 14 because the ritual of purification of leprosy needed to add exactly these three elements as well. So the isop and the cedarwood and the scarlet um, as part of all the procedure. And all three elements are connected with the regeneration of the human being to become a new creature. Uh, let us continue with Numbers 19.9. And that is uh, the main purpose of the sacrifice. We find here the water of separation from sin. So it's not only purification, uh, as, as a regular ritual, but imply completely separation from sin. Because um, Yesaya 59.2 explains us very well what is this water of separation. Iniquities have separated you from your God. So when we stay in sin and practicing, cheering um, these uh, actions or thoughts or words that are in completely disharmony with the principles of heaven, we are separating ourselves from God because God cannot have any uh, communion with sin or practicing of sin. So when the red heifer with all these other three products, the cedarwood, the isop, and the scarlet was completely burned in the fire, the ashes needed to be rescued. And these ashes were considered uh, holy uh, ingredients to uh, establish the water of purification 
or at the expression, the water of separation. We have even a third a term that is the bitter water, so the waters of bitterness. And that was um, clean water with um, some um, ashes as the result of the sacrifice of the red heifer. And that was kept by the priest family. And they were used, used in very specific circumstances and a preparation even in the a priesthood needed to take place in order to establish this recipe with the water and the ashes. And the purpose was a completely separation from sin. Let us continue further, uh, Numbers 19, 17 through 19. And it's, it's very interesting, the statement here, the unclean were cleansed by being sprinkled with the ashes. Uh, in some cases, they needed to drink it, and others was only sprinkled upon the uh, declared unclean individual or unclean object or unclean location. First Corinthians 6, 11 give us even more light about this understanding in the New Testament. We, uh, ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. So baptism uh, is the um, transition uh, that elevate us to a commitment and also to a new life. And was very clear presented here as the water of separation. I, I will encourage you strongly to read the full chapter 19 of Numbers. I pre-selected these seven main steps in the ritual that present the type and the anti-type and clarify to us as Bible believers that in Christ, the full fulfillment um, was uh, a fact. Let us go to the next slide and we are going to see a more contemporaneous issue. Um, so the red heifers in Israel, and that is very important for us to understand. Um, what I first need to disclaim to you, that is not Bible-based information. So that is uh, Judaism tradition, completely separated for any Bible understanding. But this has information that help us to understand how uh, in the traditional Jewish faith, um, the red heifers are to be understood by the fact that they don't accept Jesus as the Messiah that was coming on this earth. So on Thursday afternoon, September 15, 2022, at 5 p.m., five faultless red heifers arrived in Israel. Five. They were originally stopped in Texas and were flown all the way from the U.S. The Temple Institute, dedicated to the restoration of the Jewish Temple, reported a modest ceremony was held at the unloading bay of the cargo terminal at Ben Gurion Airport in Israel, where the new arrivals were greeted and speeches were made by the incredible people who have put their hearts and souls and means into making this, and that is very significant, historic, prophetic day become a reality. So that is a statement from the Jewish uh, Temple Convention. And that is uh, the Temple Institute uh, established in the United States that gather funds that appeal also to all Protestant churches that believe that Israel is the people of God and that the Messiah is still coming. Um, that, that is very difficult to con reconcile by the fact that the Protestant churches believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, but they still they accommodate this belief to the not belief of the Messiah in Judaism. Very difficult to conciliate both thoughts, but that is the present reality. So this call by the Temple Institute, Historic Prophetic Day, uh, is connected, as I mentioned before, 
with the establishing of the tabernacle before the red hive uh, um, uh, ceremony, uh, before the first temple, before the second temple. So as I have mentioned as well, they keep the ashes. So since the second temple uh, by Ezra and Nehemiah, the, high, the, the ashes of the heifer was uh, collected and keep it now. Um, that is now in the second temple, uh, uh, embellished uh, fully by Herod, that was destroyed in year 70. And then no more ashes, no more red heifers. And then, uh, as we have seen in programs before, is a completely annihilation, uh, elimination, not only the city, the temple, the name, the location, and the population, but to re-establish uh, uh, the red hyper system is, is a precedent for a third temple. Therefore, it's so significant for Judaism. And please keep in mind the date, because that is very important. It's September 15, 2022. Now, um, according to the Jewish tradition, uh, the declaration that they did was the following. They have found some perfect rate heifers. They are being keep under careful watch and not all in the same place. Three are in Shiloh and can be seen by the public. Please remember Shiloh, that Genesis 49, the description of Judah uh, and the place where and from the line that the Messiah will come. That is a reason why from these five, three are in Shiloh based on Genesis 49 and, uh, and can be seen by the public, but others are being kept safely elsewhere unknown. Um, now is an issue here related with um, when this uh, ritual is going to happen. That is unknown. We have only suppositions and rumors uh, that are even offered by the Temple Institute. More than that, preparations are being made to burn any that are still perfectly red, probably at Passover, or perhaps the 50 days after that is Shavuot, the Feast of the Weeks, or in the New Testament version, Pentecost. It is all happening, but as exciting as this might be for those dedicated to the law of Moses, it's proven nothing short a severe provocation to Israel enemies. So that is the description of, uh, you, you have here, down below the link to the official news uh, that reported this expression. Now, um, why for the Arabs that is a provocation, especially uh, because this is the pre-step to build a temple. But in the temple is the the place of the temple of the temple mouth is where we have the temple of islam so they realize is a dangerous situation that the red hives already arrived in israel so it's, it's a matter of time when the sacrifice is going to happen when the water of purification is going to be available and the next step will be the temple based on Jewish tradition. Let us see something very significant from a spokesman from Hamas uh, and give this 100 days into the war precipitated by the massacre of October 7th. Okay, so let us see this statement. We look back 100 days to remember the educated, the complicit and the incapacitated among the world powers governed by the law of the jungle, reminding them of an aggression that reached its peak against our path, al quds and al kasha with the start of this actual temporal and spatial division and the bringing of red cows as an application of a detestable religious myth 
designed for aggression against the feelings of an entire nation in the heart of its Arab identity and the path of its prophet, the night journey and ascension to heaven. So uh, generally you will not find this information in the news that connected the reason of the attack in October. Um, that is very significant for us because we know the background in Numbers 19 um, and the Arabs know as well. So they were the only ones that connected the dots and realized, okay, we are in a very dangerous situation. And for them, that was a provocation, that was a blasphemy. And that was a detestable action of aggression in progress toward uh, Islam. Let us see even more than that. Um, this term that we already mentioned uh, in the statement of the spokesman of Hamas, Al-Aqsa Flat, is so important because this uh, mean um, the Great Domet Mosque of the Temple Mount. That, that is the name in Arab. And that is so significant because that is like a red rag to a bull. News of the Red Heifer had signaled to the watching Islamic world that the Temple Mount might not be exclusively they forever. Concerns about the desecration of the Temple Mount Plaza and the Al-Aqsa Mosque have been the cause of multiple outbreaks of violence. And this new is an incendiary as it gets. Um, and then happened the operation in October 7. So let me uh, inform you a little bit about how was the Temple Mount um, in possession of Arabs before. Uh, in our last uh, program, we have uh, moved until um, Salami and how finally the Arabs allowed Jews to come back to Jerusalem. They restored the name of the city and they even um, allowed them to stay in Jerusalem, to settle there and to build a small synagogue uh, some uh, near, somehow near to the Dam of the Rock. So um, something very interesting happened um, when Israel in 1948 was recognized as a nation and the east part of Jerusalem was entrusted to them, was not allowed access to the Dome of the Rock. So they didn't have the right to go to Mount Moriah. That is the reason why a place was entrusted to them and that is the Wall of Lamentation so that no desecration between Jewish, Islam, or Christians came as a conflict. Now, uh, that was an agreement, and that was kept so far, but uh, with the Six-Day War that finished in 1967, uh, an escalation happened by the fact that Israel took the entire city of Jerusalem. So it was not only the east part of the Jerusalem, but they even extended on the other side of the Jordan to the um, heights of the Golan and until the south section. And we know that they took the entire Sinai Peninsula. Uh, we know that after were several negotiations, so they uh, were returning to Egypt one more time, but it still was um, a territorial distribution. Uh, but still, that was an issue with the Mount Moriah and the Dome of the Rock. So, uh, the decision was taken by International Council that Jordan, the country of Jordan, will be in control of the Dome of the Rock and the Moriah Temple. And that was confirmed in 1994, so from 1967 to 1994, in order to keep the peace. And there are not indications of policy change anytime soon, so that is uh, confirmed. Even Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, confirmed that they don't have 
any plan to change this agreement since 1994. Um, but the arrival of the Red Hives uh, represent a red flag for Islam. Uh, so this gives them the impression by the Temple Institute that they are ready and they are waiting to proceed further. And um, permission is not granted until today to use to worship in the uh, Dome of the Mount. Mm, the holy things that are there are uh, Muslim ones and is assigned to them the specific area of the wall of the lamentation. Uh, but the fact that the uh, hyphers are there is an element of concern. And as a result of this provocation, also we have the attack of the military operation in October 7 from Hamas toward Israel. So when we see that in context, we realize and we understand, uh, I mean in context, not that we agree with, uh, but we um, understand the cause and effect of these red heifers inside of the traditional Jewish uh, self-understanding of Numbers 19, especially after the destruction of the Second Temple in year 70, uh, no red heifers anymore. So. Um, to bring the red hypers to Israel uh, mean that the preparation for the purification of the Temple Mount is in plan uh, and, and in order to discourage any further procedures, the October 7 attack happened. Okay, now we understand the connection here mm -hmm. and you explain to us that uh, the, the term that, you know, the red hyper, how we can relate that with Jesus mm -hmm. and it involves purification and the word separation yes. and water. And this is very significant in Christianity, the yes. base of Christianity, the water baptism. Yes. And it's very clear with that. So thank you very much for giving us this understanding, sister, because it is a spiritual study more than more than what we are studying political or the historical part of it. Because it is more evident that the red hypers are appearing in the Old Testament as a type and anti-type. And then we understand how it is related with Christianity and how Christ is getting related with this. Exactly. And Christ was crucified in Golgotha and then that is outside the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was crucified and completely. And uh, it is exactly what we were talking about and unblemished and uh, no spots on Christ and no, no sin was found. On and the body was not desecrated either. Yes, so yeah. it is completely was very parallel and mm -hmm. very significantly we can compare that and we can understand yes. and I'm sure the brethren who asked this question are very clear with the message that there is no once again we say that there is no third temple and there is no acceptance of uh, the worldly or the political or the Israelites and it is the true Israelites uh, we are here as the, the spiritual Israelites who keep the commandments, the laws and the testimony. And also we witness for Christ and waiting for the Messiah. Yes, we are waiting for the Messiah as Adventists and we are looking forward to have the second coming. And uh, I think we should be having dealing with the many other questions in the future. And uh, there is a misconception between, uh, because when, the, when we receive the questions, we understand the misconception between the second coming, the events of the second coming versus the events of the third coming of right. Christ. Because the questions are coming to us asking, oh, so Christ is going to come to come and land on the Mount Olives and, the, and uh, Jerusalem will be rebuilt again and they want to know about that. So we will be studying about this subject in the future. Any last words you want to do? 
kind of system. Yes, I, I, I am fascinated uh, with uh, the wonderful truth that God offered to us to understand Amen. Old and New Testament. And I think we need to be very thankful and appreciate deeply the plan of salvation. And we need to uh, not take it by granted, but to have a personal experience as Jesus, as a personal savior in this process of transformation, purification and separation of uh, anything that establish a wall of partition between God and ourselves. Amen. So this is very clear, and uh, I would like to uh, invite Sister Raquel, please lead us in prayer. We can be really thankful to the Lord for this wonderful revelation and also all his mercy extended to us to clarify all these truths. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come to thee with thankful hearts and with a humble spirit to express our gratitude for the wonderful truths that you have inspired in this world and that allow us to come closer to you, to appreciate and cherish in the deep of our hearts the plan of salvation and you as our personal savior. Help us, Lord, to live according to your principles by the power of your spirit within us. Help us to depart from everything that establishes separation with you as our Lord and Savior. Help us to improve in our personal experience, to grow in spirituality and come near to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, we'd like to thank all of you for joining with us and uh, also those who join with us maybe at a later time watching this uh, on the YouTube videos. And uh, we'd like to thank Sister Raquel once again for, you, for this that. wonderful opportunity we received uh, and the explanations received from her, the clarification. And until we see each other on another Q&A program, God bless you and God be with you.